Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna show you how to use the HDRI Manager plugin for Houdini, 3ds Max and Maya. First I'll show you how to install it, then we'll see how to set up your library properly. So first, grab the plugin from Gumroad. If you're on 3DS Max, it's super simple. Just drag the MZP archive straight into the viewport. Then open the Customize Interface window, head over to the Toolbars tab and look for the HDRI Manager category. From there, you can just drag the macro to your toolbar so it's always right there when you need it. On Maya, it's pretty much the same idea. Unzip the archive, drag the install Python file into the viewport and you've got a new shelf button ready to go. For Houdini, unzip the archive, open the install file, and it'll run a Python script that automatically creates the shelf tool for you. Create a new folder and name it whatever you want. This will be the root of your library. In HDRI Manager, we need to tell the plugin where that folder is. To do that, go to Edit Gallery Path and point it to your library root. Right now, you'll notice it doesn't show anything yet. That's because we haven't added any files. For this um, demo, I'm going to use a few HDRI collections I've gathered from the internet. The first one is a studio collection. Just create a folder inside your library and drop the HDRI files in there. Back in the plugin, you can now see the folder, but still no images. That's because each HDRI file needs a JPG thumbnail with the exact same name in order to appear. The easiest way to create these thumbnails is with HDR Converter Pro, which you can also get for free on my Gumroad. In the first tab, set your folder path, adjust the settings however you want and convert the files. Lighter thumbnails will load faster in the app so it's better to keep the resolution reasonably low. Now each HDRI file has its own JPG thumbnail with the same name. When we go back to HDRI Manager, the images show up right away. Since I kept the preserve metadata option when creating the thumbnails. The original resolution is stored and displayed in the plugin. Inside the app, you can filter HDRIs by name, but you can also organize them further by creating another level of subfolders. For example, in this studio collection, I might make a folder just for soft lights. HDR Converter Pro has a filter and move tab that can help here. It lets you move files into a new folder based on their names. Now all the soft lights are in their own subfolder. You can repeat this as much as you want. For example, I could make another subfolder for abstract textures. Now, sometimes when you download an HDRI collection, it comes completely messy. Dozens of nested folders and it's a pain to organize. A quick solution is to extract everything and then use another HDR Converter Pro tool called Move to Root. It goes through all the subfolders and brings every file up into the main folder, which makes things much easier to sort. At this point, I only want to keep the HDR or EXR files, so I delete the rest, then use HDR Converter Pro again to generate the thumbnails. And finally, here's a little trick. 
you can add a number prefix to your folders to control the order they appear in the plugin. Now let's take a look at how to actually use HDRI Manager. The first thing you want to do is pick an HDRI. Just check the box of the one you want and then choose how you want to import it. Depending on the software you're using, the options might look slightly different, but in general you'll always be able to choose between a dome light and an area light. Once you've made your choice, just click Execute. Since I'm using Arnold here, the HDRI was loaded directly into an Arnold light. Right now, several render engines are already supported. If you import another HDRI while your dome light is selected, it will simply update that light, which is great if you want to quickly test different options. If you don't have a light selected, HDRI Manager will just create a new one. You can also bring an HDRI in as a square area light. In that case, its size will automatically match the dimensions of the texture. And finally, you can even have the plugin automatically add a color correction shading node to your HDRI when it's imported. For Houdini, the concept is pretty much the same. The only difference is that you need to choose which renderer you are working with, since Houdini doesn't have a single render engine assigned to the whole scene. By default, Solaris mode is used, which means the lights will be created in the stage context. Other modes, like Mantra or Redshift, will create the lights directly in the object context. And if you're already inside a LOP network in Solaris, the lights will be created right there, instead of in the stage context. Alright, I think that covers uh, the main features. There are also some extra tools like Copy to Project or Open in Photoshop, which are pretty self-explanatory. If you have ideas, bug reports, or even just questions, feel free to reach out. I always enjoy reading your comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.